All right, so we've done under 25, under 50, under 100, and under 200. Today's budget for the gift guide video is products over $200. So over the next few days, I'll be doing gift guides under a bunch of different budgets. We're gonna do under $25, under $50, under $100, under $200, and over $200. I'll also be doing videos specifically for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So get subscribed and turn on notifications if you wanna be notified when these videos come out. I will also be adding them to the gift guide playlist, which I will include up in the top right hand corner and in the description. It will have last year's videos as well as this year's as they come out. All products I talk about will have links in the description. Most of these will be affiliate links. You're not obligated to use these, but if you do, they do support the channel and I really do appreciate it. Also, whenever I see particularly good deals that stand out quite a bit, I do post them in my Discord. You're welcome to go ahead and join and check out that deals channel. Now, the budget for $200 and over is pretty big because it's obviously $200 to literally almost anything that you can afford, but I'm gonna try to keep this video focused on things that someone would like as a gift, either yourself or one that you'd be buying for somebody else. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the new Steam Deck. And honestly, the new or the old Steam Deck are both really, really good options here. The new Steam Deck just released and they have the $549, 512GB model and the $649, 1TB model. Now, as you can see here, there's a price drop on the older LCD model. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the two LCD models here. So these are a good way to save a little bit of money. The OLED models are being reviewed extremely well. People really do like them. I personally have the LCD model. I use it a ton. A Steam Deck is a really great gift for someone who travels a lot for work or for personal stuff, or for someone who maybe just wants a more personal and portable gaming device. The Steam Deck is really, really nice for that. The OLED model does have improvements on top of just being the display change. There are some really great videos that explain all of that if you do want to check any of them out. But obviously the display, the battery size, and the Wi-Fi change are probably some of the biggest. Although they've also made improvements to the cooling system. They reduced the size of the actual chip from 7 nanometers to 6. So the cooling is supposed to be quite a bit better as well. Again, check out some other videos that go through this a little bit more in depth. I don't have an OLED model to do a comparison. Now on the same thread, the ROG Ally is another really great alternative. The ROG Ally, I believe, is probably one of the reasons that Valve went forward of doing the OLED Steam Deck before doing a Steam Deck 2. Now, I don't know enough about the ROG Ally to tell you which one would be better. And obviously, I've only personally used the original Steam Deck. But from what I had originally watched, the ROG Ally is a little bit more powerful uh, than the Steam Deck, doesn't have as great of a battery life, and the QC on things like the buttons may not be as good, but I would highly suggest you go ahead and check out any of the other videos on YouTube where people do thorough, in-depth comparisons of the two devices. Now, over the $200 price point is where you can get some really incredible headphones and noise canceling is one of those things that gets a major quality bump over $200. You can get some pretty decent ones under a hundred. Um, again, with earbuds we talked about in the previous video, those ones are very, very good under 200. Um, and in terms of headphones, you can find some again under $200, but once you go over, it makes a really big jump in quality in terms of the noise canceling abilities. For example, the WH-1000 XM4s, these are a noise canceling headphone that I have. I like them very much. They are the previous generation. What that means though, is that they are gonna be less expensive than the newer generation. Currently on sale down to $248, which is not bad. I bought mine open boxed, and if you'd like, you can probably find some pretty good deals with open box ones as well. Now, what I was saying with the quality difference of noise canceling from under 200 to over 200, my mom has an older pair of Sony's that were maybe around $160 and the first time she tried my XM4s, she was absolutely blown away by how much better they were in terms of the noise cancellation and just their overall comfort. Their battery life is incredible. These are a very, very, very good headphone. Now the XM5s are almost $100 more. They're still on sale right now, down from 400 to 328. But as you can see, they are significantly more expensive. And I really don't think that they're worth that major price jump. The XM4s are a very good headphone still, 
and for a much better price. So I would probably push people towards the XM4s over the XM5s when looking at the headphones. Now, in terms of the earbuds, the WF-1000 XM4s are also a pair that I have, and I like them very, very much. Currently, they're $230, but the newer versions, the XM5s, are considered to be a pretty large leap better, and the price gap between these two generations isn't nearly the same as they are with the headphones. The XM5s are $248, they're only $20 more, and again, a lot of reviewers have mentioned that the XM5s are a pretty good jump over the previous generation XM4s. For an extra $20, I think that this is a better option to probably go with the newer model, especially since the price gap is so small. Now, one quick thing to keep in mind is that noise canceling earbuds will never be as good as noise canceling headphones. And the reason for that is noise canceling headphones have the added benefit of sound isolation on top of the actual noise canceling, which is using the microphones to cancel out sound. So usually if someone really wants to focus on the noise cancellation side of things and they're using it more for a travel kind of idea and they're not gonna be doing a lot of movement, the headphones are usually a better idea. But if the person is trying to use these more as a everyday thing that they're wearing on their walks to work, uh, when they go for jogs, you know, all those kinds of things, earbuds are usually a better idea there. Earbuds are also have the added benefit of not heating up your ears as much because they're not holding all of that air against your head. So choosing which route is really dependent on what you or your gifty prioritizes in terms of headphones over earbuds. Now, last year, a lot of the really good keyboards were in this over $200 range. But since then, a lot of the best keyboards honestly fall between that $100 to $200 range that I talked about in the previous video. Although at over $200, you still can get some really good quality keyboards. And oftentimes you do get a little bit of a hike in terms of the overall quality. I don't personally think it's worth it. And I still think that the hundred to $200 is the perfect sweet spot, but you still do get some quality boards over 200 bucks. For example, the glorious GMMK Pro pre-built from Amazon is currently $242 or $241.49. This is actually cheaper than Glorious sells it on their own website right now. So it's a pretty good deal. You're getting the keyboard completely built, not bare bones. You're getting a full set of keycaps. You're getting a standard, you know, key puller, switch puller, and you're also getting a wrist rest. Glorious also does include a coiled cable with their keyboards. So again, you are getting a lot more premium items with this keyboard. Um, whether or not that's worth it to you or your gifty is entirely up to you. Now, in terms of wireless headsets, you're getting into the really premium area of wireless headsets. You get a ton of extra features and usually you're getting a much better set of headphones themselves in terms of the sound quality. First ones we're gonna talk about are the Audis Maxwell wireless gaming headset. Currently right now they are unavailable, but when I reviewed the list earlier this morning, they were still available. These usually hover around $299, so I would definitely check these out if they're available. They're probably considered to be one of the best overall quality wireless headsets that you can buy. But another great option are the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pros. I've mentioned this before, but these are what I use primarily for work. One of the things I really love about the Arctis Pro series of headphones over the years is that they have the charging station built into the dock for your batteries and your batteries are entirely removable. What this means is that you can have, the headphones come with two pairs of batteries. You can have one charging in the charging station and one in your headset. Once the one in your headset starts to die, you pull it out, you replace it with the one that's in the charging dock, you plug the new one in and you're good to go. There's no downtime, there's no need for you to have to be plugged in with a cable while your battery's charging. It's an extremely convenient thing to have. One of the downsides about the Pros, however, is that you do have to use it with this dock or in Bluetooth mode. It doesn't come with a little mini dongle, so when you're traveling, it's not nearly as nice, but these are an extremely comfortable headphone. They sound very good. The microphone is great. And again, I use this for all of my work stuff. I do tons of calls. They're a really, really good headphone. Now, another great headset is the Logitech G Pro X2 Lightspeed Wireless. This is the generation two compared to the generation one that we talked about in the $200 and under category. These ones just have a general improvement in terms of sound quality. 
the cups are a little bit larger. The drivers are supposed to be quite a bit better. Um, there are, again, an extremely popular wireless headset. These ones are used quite a bit, I've seen, in terms of FPS pros using these ones as well. They're a nice headphone. I haven't personally used these at all, so I don't have any personal experience, but I did like the original Gen 1s, and people have said that the Gen 2s are just an overall great improvement. Now, last year, I talked about the Quest 2 and how much I absolutely loved using a VR headset and how fun it is. This year, the Quest 3 has come out and it is $500 right now for the 128 gig version. The Quest 3 is a massive upgrade over the Quest 2. It's smaller, it has more cameras, they use a lot more mixed reality, which means you can wear the headset. It has full color cameras so you can see the world around you and do a lot more things with AR. You may have seen a video or two where people are doing chores while watching a movie, for example. The Quest 3 is a really, really good idea in terms of just a great affordable and portable VR device. It being part of Meta is the biggest downside, obviously. It's great that they have split away from the fact that you needed to have a Facebook account to use these. So that is a nice benefit. And do realize that the reason that this is significantly cheaper than a lot of the other VR headsets is because they're selling these at a loss. They do collect a lot of data with these. Do keep that in mind if you're purchasing it. I don't personally have the Quest 3, but I really wish I did. Um, if anybody wants to reach out and send out a Quest 3 for me to check out, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Under $200, we didn't really see a lot of options for cameras. Um, and honestly, under the $200 mark, you're probably much better off using your phone camera for almost anything. But over $200, you get a lot more options. There are obviously ones that are insanely expensive that you can go for. I'm gonna talk about ones that I know of and that I have used that are very, very good. First thing up is the Alpha from Sony, the A6100. It's an APS-C, which means it has a crop sensor, but it's very, very affordable. It's very light, it's very small. It still has an interchangeable lens, so you can use it with all kinds of lenses all over the place. This is a really good option and it's currently under $700. This isn't the best price it's ever been, but it's pretty decent. If you do have lenses that you wanna use and that you can use, you can go with the body only for $598, so you save 100 bucks. It's entirely up to you. This is a pretty good improvement over the original A5100. Now, in terms of full frame, you can go with something like the Sony A7 IV. This is the newest of the Alpha series, and it is rumored that there are gonna be a few more models coming out earlier next year, but right now, this is Probably one of the best general use cameras that you can use for a lot of different purposes, whether it's video or photography. $2,300, there isn't really much of a discount here. Check around and see if you do see any discounts elsewhere. Amazon usually isn't the best place to buy cameras. Usually your local camera store will probably do a better job than Amazon will in terms of discounts. Now over $200, you basically get access to some of the best action cameras you can buy right now, all of the most current generation. If you did want to go under $200, you could look at the previous generations and those usually get discounted pretty heavily, especially, you know, if you're going two generations back, for example, I have the Hero 10, which now is pretty cheap. Now GoPro is obviously one of the largest names in the action camera space and getting a really nice action camera for somebody who really likes doing outdoor activities like snowboarding, skiing, mountain biking, off-roading. There are so many really fun purposes and uses for a good action camera. $350 is a relatively good deal. Not the best that I've seen. And again, if you go with an older generation, you probably can get it discounted. So do keep that in mind. Insta360 is also another major player in the action cam space. And if you want a 360 camera, like the Insta360 X3, currently $404. Again, not a very large discount on this one, but it can do so much more. It's used in a very different way than the GoPro is. Obviously having a 360 camera, you get a much different perspective. You've probably seen some funny 360 videos before. They're very, very interesting. And if this is something that your gifty is interested in, this is a really, really good idea. Now Insta360 also has the Go 3, which is an extremely tiny action camera that you can put almost anywhere. It is a very unique option for that purpose. Currently $380, just like the others, not a very big discount. But if you know someone that would love to use one of these 
very tiny, very portable action cameras that you can stick on a dog or a cat and they probably wouldn't notice. Um, you can stick it on a shirt. You can stick it on a paper airplane. There's a guy who does all these videos where he puts these on like larger paper airplanes. It's pretty cool. It's a very unique camera. You can get some really cool footage with it. So if you or your gifty is interested in doing some very unique perspectives, this might be a really fun idea. Now, another really great option from Insta360 that is not an action cam, but is a webcam is the Insta360 Link. Now, this is a very unique webcam. There are a few of them like this, and it has its full built-in gimbal, which means that it can follow you around. Um, if you're someone who on business calls or just regular video calls likes moving around, these are a really good option. A couple members of the executive team have gotten these after my suggestions because they do like moving around their offices when doing their Teams calls. It's a really, really good camera. It also has the ability to look directly down at your desk for a top-down view, which is also pretty cool. These are a very powerful webcam. You're getting a lot of features for it. It is currently discounted from 300 down to 255. So not a terrible deal, not the most incredible deal either. This is a really cool option. Now, just like in the under $200 range, the over $200 range, I could probably talk about headphones for an hour or so, but I will try to keep this condensed. I'm going to talk about ones that are very well reviewed, and we're going to kind of go from a lower to a slightly higher tier as we go on. The first item are going to be the Hyphaman Sundaras. These are a planar magnetic headphone, which means that they use a magnetic membrane instead of a typical driver. They are an open back headphone. These are extremely popular. I have one of Hyphaman's other planar headphones, the HE4XX that I bought from Drop. I love them, they're incredible. They have a very unique sound and I do really like the planar for particular types of content. So these are a very unique and awesome option for $300, which isn't too bad. Another nice thing about these is that although they have a slightly higher impedance, an amp isn't absolutely necessary, but if you or your gifty do wanna get more volume out of these headphones, an amp is definitely recommended. Now staying with Hyphaman and the planar style headphones, but going up in price to something that's a little bit higher quality are the XS, which are a very popular planar headphones. These are considered probably one of the best planars that you can buy under $500. They typically don't sit at $500, even though the list price says five. They're usually around 450 or so. So this discount's not incredible, but it's not bad either for $380. These are a really, really nice option. Definitely gonna want an amp with these ones. These aren't gonna be something that you can use directly from your phone unless you have a portable wireless DAC amp. Now, the one closed back option that I would suggest over the $200 price point where it's worth paying that extra money are the Bird Dynamic DT 1770 Pros. These are typically $530. They're currently down to about 500 bucks on sale. Again, not a crazy deal right now, but these are a very, very good closed back headphones. And as the, if that's what someone prefers, these are a really great option. 250 ohms, so you're definitely gonna want an amp with these ones, but these are considered probably one of the best affordable closed back headphones that you can buy. And by affordable, they're usually saying under $1,000. Now, if we're gonna go over $1,000, the only option that I've ever personally used are the Sennheiser HD 800 S's. These are quite the headphone, they're open back, they're very, very good sounding. I personally didn't think that they were worth $1,500, but a lot of people do. Sound is one of those things where it's very subjective and it really depends on whoever's listening and what they would want to pay for these. They did sound really, really good. I just didn't think that they were worth, you know, three or more times more than what I currently use in terms of a headphone but these are considered to be some of the best open back headphones that you can buy from a larger company and not one of the smaller boutiques. $1,500, quite a bit of money for a pair of headphones, but if that's what you or your gifty really do prioritize, and this is within the budget that you wanna spend, these are an incredible option. Another really great gift idea over $200 are racing wheel setups. And usually I would suggest if you're gonna be buying this as a gift that you stay within the relative budget range Reason I say that is if someone is invested in racing simulators already and they have equipment, you're probably not gonna be able to buy them something better than something that they already have. And if you are, your best bet is to ask them what they were looking to upgrade within their current setup and then buying that particular piece. 
once you get into the enthusiast level racing setups, each piece can be hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So that is probably the best direction for that. But if you do want to get someone into racing simulators for the first time, the best option, in my opinion, is the Thrustmaster T300 RS. One of the reasons the T300 RS is usually the best you know, entry option is because it's one that will last quite a long time. The Logitech G29 are also a relatively good option, but you are getting a lower quality system overall. The G29 uses a gear driven system, whereas the T300 uses a belt driven system. I would typically recommend though, to go between one of these two as a really good entry level. The reason for that is these are entry level items that'll last a very long time. They're not built poorly. They're built very, very well. You are gonna spend a little bit more, but they're a good long lasting quality product. I have the T300 RS, I really do like it. I have a few extra steering wheels that I use with it. It's a really, really great product. You can buy one of these steering wheel stands as well that allows you to mount the steering wheel and the pedals onto an actual foldable stand. And it makes the setup just quite a bit better instead of using the desk mount and just having the pedals loosely on the floor. Again, using one of these as an introduction for someone into the racing simulator world is great. I personally really love mine and anybody that's ever come by to try them really does enjoy it. Now in a similar thread, if the person that you're gifting for prefers planes over cars, getting them a really nice Hotas can be an awesome option. And this again is the price range that you would probably want to pay for a relatively better system that'll last them a lot longer. The Logitech G56 Hotas is a really, really good option here. It's relatively inexpensive. It's $250. I wasn't able to find it on sale really anywhere, but do keep your eyes out for it. I have the older version of this and I really do like it. It's nice having the dual system with the stick and the throttle. Not A lot of the cheaper systems usually do not have both. And if they do have both, they're very limited in terms of their range. This is a really, really good option for a relatively entry level HOTAS system. Now standing desks have become a lot more affordable over the last few years. And the reason for that is their rise in popularity has mean that more people are buying the products. The companies are able to sell more and buy more of the raw materials, which drives the cost of them down. Now, for example, a really good option here is from FlexiSpot. This is the EN1. This is a complete desk, $215. You can pay a little bit more to get certain colors. There are a lot of options here available to you. This is one of the larger size desks. And I personally do like the idea of a larger desk. It's entirely up to you or your gifty what would work best. There are a lot of options here from FlexiSpot. Now an example of that is their smaller models, typically around $250 are currently on a really large discount under 200. So it doesn't really fall within this video, but I did want to mention it. It's a really, really good option. If you did want to spend over $200 and this is still the best size for your gift D, combining this with maybe one of the other items I've talked about in any of my videos might be a really good idea. Buying this alongside of a chair, anything, these are really, really good options and their affordability is pretty crazy. This even has an additional $36 off coupon. So it's a hundred bucks for a standing desk. Now, if you or the person that you're gifting for already has a desk that they really do like, and they would like to just turn that into a standing desk, you can buy the frames entirely separately. FlexiSpot has one right now with a $100 coupon. This brings it right at the $200 mark. You can get it in the gray or the black legs. This is an awesome option for people who want to improve their current desk, use it as a stand desk. And this is probably one of their best frames. It has three different heights, having something with memory built into it so that you can have predetermined heights saved in the system and you just press the button is probably the best way to go. They're honestly, again, getting much more affordable. And this is what I might actually do with my personal work desk once I move. Now I did a video entirely dedicated as a buying guide for chairs and not going the cheaper route or for ones that are really bad for your body like all of these gaming chairs. Within that though, there is one really good option that you can buy brand new without breaking the bank. And that one is the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro here. Currently it is a hundred dollars off directly from Autonomous. It seems like they're not really selling these on the American Amazon anymore. So do keep that in mind. 
but this is probably one of my number one options in terms of buying something brand new without going over a thousand dollars. If you want to know more about the higher budgets, I definitely recommend checking that video out. I can go for hours talking about chairs. I used to work in that industry and I do have a ton of experience, but buying chairs from Herman Miller, from Kielhauer and from Steelcase, brand new, you're probably going to be going over a thousand dollars. Um, you can buy them used, usually around the same price of around $400, but usually if you're buying something as a gift, you kind of want to get them something new and not something secondhand. Now, laptops are a very common gift idea, and this one almost always is going to fall above the $200 price point. One of the most popular options, of course, are the MacBooks, and the MacBook Pro currently $2,250 for the brand new M3 Pro. This one is available in the Space Black. I personally do not have a MacBook, but I do have a relative amount of experience using them lately. They're very nice. I would love to have one so that I can do videos on both Mac and Windows options for software and stuff. But this is a really, really good option here. You can even go up to the Max chip, which is gonna increase your price even more to almost $3,000. The discounts on Amazon aren't that great. I didn't see anything crazy on Apple's own website either but do check out different stores as these are gonna be available almost everywhere. Now under $1,000, one of the best options for a two-in-one are usually gonna be the Lenovo Yoga 7i series. This is the 16 inch version. It has Intel's uh, integrated graphics. These are really, really good options for people who want a two-in-one. Two-in-ones are extremely convenient, being able to use the touchscreen. Getting a stylus pen with it is also a very nice bundle. For $959, it's not bad, but with anything computer related, I would highly suggest shopping around, seeing which stores have the best deal. It's really gonna vary based on where you are. And Amazon doesn't seem to have this one discounted right now. It may be cheaper directly from Lenovo. It may be cheaper from Walmart or Target. You may even find it at something like Costco. Definitely shop around for these. Now over $1,000, you get into the Microsoft Surface Pro series. This is currently just over $1,000, but this is another really, really good two-in-one. The Surface Pros are obviously designed to be used mainly in the tablet mode, and the keyboard is just an addition to it, so it's a little bit different than the Lenovo Yoga, where it's more of a laptop that transforms into a tablet. The, the Surface 9 Pro, I would say it's more of a tablet that can be kind of transformed into a laptop. If the person you're buying for really does like using drawing stuff and writing things on the display and they really want to focus using the touchscreen over using a keyboard, the Surface Pro is probably the better route to go than the Yoga. But if they do really like using a good keyboard, you're not going to get that with the integrated keyboard that come with the Surface Pro 9. Now, in terms of gaming laptops, these can vary in price all over the place, depending on the different components that you want to be within them from the display, the CPU, the GPU, the storage, the RAM, the actual build of the laptop. It's really gonna range. One of the really popular options it seems right now are the Alienware M18. I bought an Alienware long time ago, back in 2010, when they were just first acquired by Dell. It still runs, it's still a very good laptop, but you are paying a very large premium for Alienware products, so do keep that in mind. But this is considered to be one of the you know all out laptops that are a really good option for gaming. If you want something that's a little bit more affordable, however, the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i is a very good option. It's currently $1,600 on Amazon. Again, just like what I mentioned before, you might be able to find better deals for this. Elsewhere, I'm just trying to show some examples, but a gaming laptop is really nice and you don't have to spend over $2,000 on one. For example, my Lenovo Legion 5, that is a couple years old now. I paid about $1,200 for that. It came with a 3070 instead of the 4070, and it came with the AMD CPU. Definitely shop around, but right now, this is a pretty good price for this laptop. If you did want some assistance in knowing if a particular laptop or computer you're looking to buy for yourself or for somebody else is a good idea, I'm more than happy to help out. I know that there are tons and tons of options out there, and there are all these small minor changes between them all. You're welcome to go ahead and join the Discord. That's probably the best way to reach me. Go ahead and post into one of the channels like Tech Time, and I'm more than happy to give you a hand. Now, another popular option that is both under and over $200 are tablets. 
Over $200, you're obviously getting the more premium versions of a lot of these tablets. For example, the Apple iPad 10th Gen. This does not have the M series chips in them right now, but it does have a very large display. These are obviously very, very popular. You probably know a ton of people that have an iPad and they're a great option within the Apple ecosystem. For a little bit more money, you can get the iPad Air, which has the M1 chip in it. This one gives you a little bit more flexibility with the M1 chips, you're able to kind of blur the line between a full laptop and tablet. And you know, the fact that their laptops and tablets are starting to have the same chips is a pretty big deal. The iPad Air is a very good option. You are getting a very strong device. You have a lot of color options there. You have a few storage option choices as well. And you have the ability to choose whether it's just a Wi-Fi or a Wi-Fi and cellular available device. Now on the Android side of things, something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus is an incredible option here. The FE models are usually a little bit stripped down from the standard models, but what a lot of people agreed on is that the FE for the S9 Plus is a very, very good option. And the price difference that you get with going with the FE being quite a bit cheaper than the S9 and the things that they removed from it are things that make a lot of sense. This is an, an incredible option at $550. You get a really, really good display on these. They do come with a pen. They're a great device if you prefer the Android side of things over the Apple side of things. Just like Apple, you do get a few color options here. You get a few storage size options and you are able to choose between just Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi and cellular capable devices. Now a rather unique option is the Google Pixel tablet. And the reason I say it's a unique option is basically everybody that reviewed this says it is not great at its price point as a tablet. Um, there are tablets at the same price point that do a lot better, but an incredible addition to a home assistance device. This is like the perfect home hub. And a lot of people are using these as their main display and their main control center for their smart home systems. This is something that I'm extremely curious in myself, and I've been debating whether or not I wanna pick one of these up for my home when I move. It may not be something I do right away, but it does very much interest me, and I've seen quite a few videos where people go over how awesome this can be as a home hub for their smart home. So if having a smart home hub takes higher importance over having a stronger, more powerful tablet, interests either you or your giftee, the Pixel tablet would be a great choice for that. Now I've talked about wearables a few times on the channel and I did a video earlier this year about the Vivo Active 4 and how happy I was to pick it up at a very good sale price. I talked about that in the under $200 price category video and obviously over $200, you get access to a lot more smartwatches. As you can see, I'm not actually wearing the Vivo Active 4 anymore. I'm wearing a Phoenix 6X Pro, which is the older generation. The newer generation though, the Phoenix 7 Pro is available on sale right now, $200 off, which is a pretty big discount for $700. The Phoenix series is up there with Garmin's top of the line watches, and it's one of their top of the line all purpose watches that isn't really focused on diving, high altitude or racing. And the reason I'm talking about it is because again, I have the older version and I absolutely love it. It is leaps and bounds better than my Vivo Active was. One of my really close friends also has this exact model and he really does like it as well. It's a very good option. As I mentioned, I have the 6X and what that means is it's just the larger body. It has the larger watch face. So the 7X Pro would be the same kind of situation, but you are paying more money for that as well. It doesn't work for all wrist sizes. I plan on doing a video specifically about this watch in the new year, so get subscribed if you do wanna check that out. There are a lot of really great options. And again, this isn't the only wearable from Garmin over $200 that is a really good option. I'm just mentioning the Phoenix 7 Pro because it is their top of the line. I do have a friend that personally is using this exact model and me using the older model. I am easily able to recommend this as a very good watch option. Now on the Apple side of things, their top of the line watch is the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Normally $800, currently it's only down to 740. Not the biggest sale, but like I said, with all the other Apple products, shop around and see if you see bigger discounts elsewhere. Just like with the Garmin though, as I mentioned, this is the top of the line product. 
it has a lot of features that not everybody's going to use again these are targeted towards very different people so if you're going to be buying this as a gift for yourself or for somebody else try to figure out what kind of device they would benefit from and again realize that these are two of the top of the line options from both of these brands there are a lot of options from them over the 200 dollars range they're all going to be really great for different purposes apple has the series 9 which is their you know general all-purpose and there's a bunch of options there um garmin has a ton of different products a bunch of different names i'm not going to go through all of them but i would definitely suggest you check them out i just wanted to talk about the two top of the line ones and then if you wanted to you can make your way down and figure out something that is best fit for you or your gifty. Now in the under $200 video, we talked about how there was a good dash cam in that price point. It was really the only good one to mention at that price point and it was a two channel dash cam. Now, once you go over $200, you start to get into three channel dash cams, which instead of the front and rear two channels, you get an additional interior channel camera. This is huge for people who do rideshare programs like Uber and Lyft. And one of the best options in this price point is the Vantru N4 Pro. This is a very, very, very well-reviewed system. It does a very good job. It's currently on sale for $300. There's an additional $20 off coupon as well, down from the standard price of $380. Now, if you don't need three channels and you only want two, but you still want to get something a little bit better than the option that I mentioned in the under $200 video, you can still get a really good improvement at this price point like the VOFO A139. Typically it is $340, it's down to $260. This is gonna give you a measurable improvement over the one that we had in the under $200 video. It's a very good option, it's very, very well reviewed. There are some great dash cam reviewers on YouTube. Many of them do very thorough in-depth videos on them. They don't take any sponsorships. They don't allow the companies to send them the products. They look at them themselves. They buy them themselves. They're very good options. If you want to look at a comparison of those, I will leave a link in the description for a very good channel for this. Now, another type of product that we talked about under $200 that you do get a very big improvement over $200 are those portable power stations that I talked about. Again, I don't have any personal experience with these, but I would really love to buy one and check one out. And just above that $200 price point is the Anchor 522. This is an improvement over the 521 that I talked about in the $200 and under video. It's very similar in terms of design. It's just a larger capacity and has a higher wattage output. Anchor also has their Solix line, which is the next step above those power stations. They have a ton more outlets. These are definitely meant to be used more as a solar generator than just a standard power station, although you can buy it without the solar panels and get it a little bit cheaper. As this one is, the C1000 is $700. You can buy it with the solar panels. And as you can see down here, it does increase the price quite a bit depending on which solar panel package you get. Now, again, I'm not suggesting these Anchor products because I know that they're good. I have no personal experience with these and I haven't looked in depth into reviews for these either. I'm recommending power stations more general and the reason I'm talking about these products specifically is because they are on sale. Anchor from a quality standpoint is relatively reputable. They're not as reputable in terms of their data handling and the way that they have been spying on people with their Eufy products. That is a whole other story. But if you do want to see someone who does review some really great power stations and does really, really good reviews on them and is very impartial towards brands and just focuses on the actual stats, the specifics and their overall quality, Reray Outdoors does a very good job. I watched a few of his videos and the thing that I like is that he really focuses on what's best for certain situations and that there's no best power station for everybody. It really depends on what the person needs. So I would highly suggest checking out his videos. So if you are looking to buy a power station for yourself or your giftee, his videos are a really great idea because you can kind of figure out exactly what you need to look at and what types of features would be beneficial based on your or your giftee's use case. Now I can't do a $200 and over gift guide without talking about Legos. We talked about it in the hundred to $200 range and those are some very good options. Once you start spending over $200 though, you are getting some incredible kits. For example, the Bugatti Chiron kit is very, very popular. It is a really, really cool looking kit. Tons of pieces. This is one that will take a decent amount of time to put together. $380 though, it is a very, very nice set. 
The Technic series are really great for people who like machines and like vehicles. And as I had mentioned in the last video, one of the reasons I love Legos as a gift idea is because they can cater to so many different interests. We had just looked at a vehicle. You can get things from the Harry Potter universe. For example, the Hogwarts castle you can get here, even more expensive, $462, but it is an absolutely massive set. This one is set to be for 16 years and older. One of the cream of the crop items that everybody wants is the Lego Star Wars Ultimate Millennium Falcon. This is great for any Star Wars fan. It is very expensive, however, $842. Legos don't often go on massive sales, but you will be able to find them on sale sometimes, so keep an eye out on it. And again, with Lego, one of my favorite things is that there are just so many different areas of interest that you can cater to with these. And there are so many options in this price point of 200 and above. You can really go for anything. There are so many different areas. If you want to look through their website, it's a lot better organized than Amazon is, for example. Take a look. And as I had mentioned in the last video, myself as an almost 30 year old man would be extremely happy getting a really nice Lego set to put together and even more happy if the person who gifts it to me wants to put it together together would be a really fun idea to do with somebody else and we're at the end of another very long gift guide video i really do hope that you like these videos again all of the products that i've talked about are more of a general idea and the specific products i talked about are just ones that i either know are very good or they're extremely popular or well-reviewed products within those categories so take a look at these keep an eye on them keep an eye on things that are similar if you do need help, as I mentioned, you're more than welcome to hop in the Discord and ask me questions. I'm more than happy to help out there. But I really do hope that this video series helped you out. If not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can also leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thought Simon Stepback, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you want to see any of the other gift guides that I've done, whether it was this year or last, you can check out the playlist right up here. I'll also be doing dedicated Black Friday and Cyber Monday videos that will be added there on those particular days. So you can go ahead and check them out. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.